Uh, hello, everyone. So thanks for joining the talk. Uh, today, Ri and I, we're going to talk about uh, some of the interesting works we've developed uh, based on uh, Apache Pulsar and Kubernetes. Uh, so the talk is uh, title is Function Mesh Complex Streaming Jobs in a Simple Way. Uh, so, okay. So uh, just a little bit of uh, uh, self-introduction. My name is Nen. I'm currently working at Stream Native, and uh, I developed a Pulsar, and uh, it's uh, uh, surrounding like big data ecosystems. And I previously worked at Twitter on the streaming and processing engine development. And Ray, who is my colleague, is also a software engineer. Like before joining Stream Native, he was working at uh, leading and focused on the stream data processing and IoT platform development uh, at Energy Internet. Uh, internet and research institution. Okay. Um, also, like a little bit about Stream Native Company. So, I think uh, based if you listen to the yesterday's keynote, you all should already know that um, Stream Native, which like founded by the creator of Apache Pulsar, and we're providing all kinds of different offerings uh, for the customers to meet their uh, business need. One is the one offering is the Stream Native Cloud, which is a fully managed enterprise SaaS offering. And the other is Stream Native Platform, which is kind of an enterprise software offering for Pulsar. So uh, let's get into the talk. So today's agenda will be uh, largely developed, uh, divided into three sections. First is about uh, like Pulsar functions. Uh, I think I will give some kind of review and uh, some concept introduction about what is Pulsar function and uh, how it looks like. And the second part is uh, talk is given by, by Ray. We will be talking about the, the work we have developed about function mesh. And the last, uh, we would like to present you a video demo about the works we have done, which is very interesting. OK, so let's start here with uh, the first one, data processing with Apache Pulsar. So as we all know, like Pulsar is kind of a messaging uh, middleware of the whole like uh, backend system. It's, it's uh, like in, consists of like the messaging uh, storage and the processing three pillars. Um, today, we're going to focus on the processing part. And uh, in terms of the processing part, um, Pulsar is kind of actually like has a very well integration with uh, Presto, which is an interactive query engines. And also, it can integrate with um, Flink, Spark, who are like kind of the currently de facto uh, data processing engine for either streaming data or batch data. And the last part also, which is very um, interesting, is the function processing, which is kind of developed uh, uh, internally by the Pulsar community to uh, to cover some of the like simple ETL cases. So we will be focusing on the function processing part. So for Pulsar functions, uh, it's kind of a lightweight. The definition is like a kind of the lightweight compute process that it can consume messages from multiple Pulsar topics and apply a user supplied processing logic. Um, to each of the message and then publish the results to another like Pulsar topic. So the user supplied processing logic can, can be anything like you want based on your need. Mm, okay, so some of the critical or some of the like uh, use cases we observed from the communities like uh, Pulsar functions can so help support like ETL, simple ETL jobs and do the real time aggregation or like uh, support the microservices and uh, also like the reactive services and event routing. So basically the Pulsar functions, it's kind of a uh, event driven, like a event driven framework for the Pulsar, for the Pulsar project. You can do it with anything uh, ranging from the ETL stuffs to the some like uh, uh, event, uh, event related stuffs. So <clears throat> since we have say that, that it's a kind of one of the processing units of the Pulsar project. So people might be asking like, what's the difference it compares to the existing or de facto uh, streaming processing engines, let's say uh, Apache Flink. Um, so based on our understanding, the Pulsar functions, it's kind of a Lambda style processing unit that are specifically designed to integrate with Pulsar. Um, but it is not like another full power streaming processing engines. So the boundary lies at like, uh, if you want to do some very complex and a uh, full power, uh, uh, powerful like uh, streaming jobs, like um, you will probably go with the uh, Apache Flink or like a Spark streaming. Um, but the cost is like you have to like uh, say, let's say uh, you have to understand that framework. You have to uh, set up a new like uh, a whole new like cluster or 
to provision some kind of this computing resources for running those kind of job. And uh, if the task is just simply do some kind of ETL transformation and some uh, uh, event reactive steps, then parser functions will probably uh, be your first choice for doing those kind of steps, especially if your org is already using the uh, Apache parser as the messaging platform. Um, so with that said, uh, we can look at uh, how parser function uh, fits into the uh, topics, the, uh, the architecture stuff. So basically, um, a parser function can consume messages from multiple topics and apply to the user logic and then like generate an output message to another like output topic. Um, so uh, also like uh, during the running to increase its visibility, we also provide some kind of log topic. So you can, the parser function can uh, send its uh, internal, some kind of internal logs into another, another like a uh, uh, parser topic for you to observe or to monitor what's happening inside the functions. So, um, uh, we mentioned that uh, the parser function can consume top data from topics and send uh, send data into topics, but it's not necessary. Like it's required to, uh, it has to like consume topics and send the data to topics. It's actually it's kind of very flexible. So uh, one of the special form of the parser functions we developed in the community is called parser connectors. Uh, they it includes like two parts. One is the source and the other is the sync. So for source, it's kind of um, <clears throat> It's like uh, fetching data from external systems instead of like reading re reading from multiple topics and send those data to ingest into Pulsa. And for sync, it, it's the other way around. So instead of like uh, sending uh, sending the result into some kind of um, uh, Pulsa topics, it will like send the send the data into some external systems. So this kind of uh, framework enables users to moving data around like. Uh, uh, from um, moving it around like into the PALSA or out of the PALSA to other like uh, storage systems. Um, okay, so this is kind of a visual graph for you to see how like a uh, source and sync works with PALSA. Basically, you can uh, consume data or send data to like from block storage, file systems, database, and uh, other like cloud services. Currently, like uh, we provide a, a stream native hub on that part hub, like we hosted a lot of like a uh, useful connectors, which hopefully will be um, useful for your uh, daily cases. So <clears throat> let's get back to the parser functions. So for parser functions, uh, we mentioned that it requires some kind of the user logic. So the API for users to providing, uh, let, let the parser functions know what you want to do is like, uh, in, you need to like implement the uh, process method for the Java API. And also, we also support like Golang and uh, Python. So it's kind of very flexible based on your like own uh, development environment. And uh, as long as you implement those kind of process uh, logic, then parser functions can be scheduled and run uh, based on your need. So here is a very simple example. Let's say we import a hello and uh, our function is called exclamation function. It doesn't a very simple task, which just append exclamation mark at the end of the input string. And then you will get a hello exclamation as an output. And this hello is from some kind of the uh, parser topics. And then this hello uh, explanation hello will be sent to other to parser topics for your other like uh, consumers to consume this kind of uh, message. Um, so currently, we the parser functions actually provide us the following like a processing uh, semantics, um, which kind of at most once um, I think it will be called a, a best effort to be more accurate, and uh, we provide at least once. So which means like the messages will only be act after the function completes, uh, which means it will be like fully processed, and effectively once which. Basically, based on Pulsar's effective voice semantics to improve that. And if you hear, if you listen to like yesterday's keynote, um, I think Sergey announced that like in Pulsar 2. Point, sorry, in Pulsar 2.8.0, uh, we are introducing the transaction uh, semantics. So with that transaction sem semantics, it's actually for in, uh, starting to be possible for us to implement the exactly one semantics. Okay, so for the run times, um, parser functions can actually run in three different modes. The first one is thread, 
basically uh, we are running the function threads as a, as a single as a threads inside the function workers. And the second one is process. Basically, we are running a separate process which is forked by the functions worker. And the last one is Kubernetes. Uh, basically, uh, it kind of requires the long function as a Kubernetes stateful set by the function worker. This uh, Kubernetes runtime is actually very interesting. And uh, we will be, I think we will be discussing that in the function mesh section. Um, but yeah, let's go move ahead. So uh, we have runtime, we have APIs. Now we need to do the deployment. So for, for the Apache Pulsar, like the Pulsar functions can be deployed in um, two ways. One is like you deploy that with the function worker inside a broker. Basically, that means like you are running the functions inside a broker. And the other way is we can deployment deploy that as a separate uh, clusters to only like receive um, a function requests in a different uh, section. Uh, and the, regarding this deployment, uh, our function match work is actually uh, different with that. For the details, I, I really I think we will discuss about that. Okay, so as a summary, like the, for the POSA functions, like uh, the POSA function can increase the developer productivity uh, because it's like very intuitive APIs, very easy to understand, and also like providing multiple languages support. Currently, we support like Java, Python, and Golang. And the operational is very simple. It's fully integrated with POSA, and uh, you don't need to set up additional like systems or services. And also like very easy for the troubleshooting. Um, so I think uh, just a quick review and the introduction of the what the functions I have done. So if you 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 are very interested in to learning like more like details about that, you can uh, subscribe to this uh, training uh, training courses, which is on the uh, event bright. Um, okay. So I think now we will be arriving at the uh, very interesting part about the function mesh work, and I, I think I will hand over to uh, Ray uh, to for for yeah. Thanks, Ning. You can go ahead and stop sharing your screen right now. Oh, the POSA, POSA functions and connectors. So uh, POSA functions and connectors has, have made building event streaming apps much more simple. But we want to make POSA functions one more step. So uh, we combined uh, the Kubernetes and the POSA functions together uh, to make a, a uh, serverless framework that natively on uh, Kubernetes that running POSA functions and connect connectors and we call it a function mesh. And the main, main purpose for uh, function mesh are uh, firstly uh, integrating uh, separate functions and connectors together to produce uh, process data and accomplish a final processing goal with a clearly uh, defined stages. Uh, secondly, uh, to utilize these uh, to, to utilizing uh, Kubernetes and native resources and the scheduling cap capability. So uh, function mesh is uh, suited for common uh, lightweighted streaming use cases, such as uh, ETL jobs, and it's not intended to be a uh, used as a full powered uh, streaming engine. So before digging into uh, function mesh, I would like to talk about some pinpoints of function, POSA functions and why we build function mesh. So if you are familiar with the POSA functions uh, worker, uh, you may know that POSA functions do have a, a Kubernetes uh, runtime, but with the Kubernetes runtime, function metadata is stored in POSA and the function running state is managed by Kubernetes. Uh, this may have an inconsistency uh, between metadata and the running state. So like the state force that running POSA functions can be deleted from Kubernetes uh, while POSA uh, does not being uh, notified. Uh, also, 
uh, the existing implementation for storing uh, function metadata may cause uh, broker crash loops if the function metadata topics are not available. Certainly, um, a function uh, cannot be used across uh, multiple uh, POSA clusters, and uh, the functions are tied to the specific uh, POSA cluster. Uh, also, uh, currently, uh, Kubernetes runtime is hard for users to um, implement uh, certain features provided by Kubernetes, such as uh, auto-scaling. Um, and additionally, uh, it is hard for users to manage multiple functions and uh, bind them into a single job to achieve complexity uh, processing goal. Without function mesh, user needs to do a lot of manual works and to organize and ma manage multiple functions to process uh, events. So uh, with, uh, with, the back, uh, with this background, uh, let's move on to function mesh. Uh, in function mesh, we have three core components and uh, which are uh, Kubernetes operator, function runner, and mesh worker service. I will firstly go through the Kubernetes uh, operator. Uh, in function mesh, we use operator SDK to define several uh, customer uh, resource definitions to allow users to define uh, functions, connectors, or mesh as a uh, customer, uh, customer resources in Kubernetes. As the code block shown, um, so we define uh, functions configuration as a function spec and the function spec are implemented based on the uh, POSA functions. So uh, also we have a source and sync. Uh, apart from them, and we also define a function mesh, or we call a uh, mesh, uh, which is a collection of functions and connectors connected to POSA uh, by uh, POSA topics uh, to achieve a more powerful stream, stream processing logics. So all functions and connectors in a mesh share the same life circle. Uh, with the defined function mesh spec, all the functions and connectors are managed together, and uh, which means um, they are started when a mesh is created and terminated when the mesh is destroyed. And here we have some external services like MySQL, MongoDB, Redis, or Kafka. Uh, with a solid arrow, uh, it defines the data from or to the external services connected with POSA function, uh, connected with POSA topics. Uh, with the outlined arrow, uh, it defines as the POSA topics to connect the different functions and connectors. So here uh, is what a mesh looks like. Uh, we assume a complex data processing flow is built with multiple post functions and other IO connectors, and it's all connected uh, by the uh, POSA, fun uh, POSA topics and uh, defined as a one mesh. Uh, so uh, this diagram shows a typical uh, user flow of function mesh. Uh, user firstly uh, prepare uh, the CRD of function mesh resources like a, a function kind YAML file or source kind YAML file or even a function mesh kind YAML file. Uh, instead of using uh, POSA admin or POSA control uh, to create or manage uh, functions, uh, we can now use Kubi control to submit uh, the prepared function mesh CRD manifest file directly to uh, Kubernetes uh, clusters. So in this uh, diagram, within the uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster, the function mesh controller, uh, which is in the uh, mesh namespace, uh, will uh, watch is uh, CRD accepted by the uh, API server and creates uh, uh, related uh, Kubernetes uh, resources such as the uh, stateful set uh, to run the defined function or connector uh, within the POSA namespace. Uh, 
So in this way, uh, both function metadata and the function running state are directly stored and managed by Kubernetes. And uh, this will avoid the inconsistency problem I mentioned before. Uh, next, we will talk about function runner. Uh, function runner invokes the functions and connectors logic when receiving events from input topics and produce the result to output topics. Uh, currently, the runners are implemented using the POSA function runner. Uh, now we have a self-contained function runner based on POSA function runtime. Uh, we built multiple individual uh, function uh, function runner images based on uh, stream natives POSA all image, and each runtime image contains the language specific uh, uh, runtime and the related two chains. Uh, we also published uh, uh, these uh, runtime images like Java, Python, and Go uh, with POSA 2.8.0 and we will keep update with the stream natives poster image. Uh, we also released a bunch of per docker uh, images for poster IO connectors to Docker Hub, uh, Docker Hub and each image is namely as a, a like stream native slash poster IO blah, 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 uh, like stream native poster IO data generator. And we have released all POSA built-in connectors with uh, some of the stream native managed connectors uh, as a per docker image. And you can check the list from stream native hub. And uh, here is the link of stream native hub. So uh, we have a, a Kubernetes operator and a function runner and uh, we can have the overall architecture of function mesh. So when a user prepared a CRD like function.yaml or function mesh.yaml, uh, he, can, he can use the Kubi control to apply and create the function mesh CRD to, to the Kubernetes API server. And the controller of function mesh receives uh, uh, the submitted CRD from the API server. Uh, then the controller processes the CRD and generates uh, the corresponding Kubernetes resources. Uh, like, a, for instance, um, when the connect, uh, controller processes the function function CRD, and it creates a stateful set to run the function, and each part. Uh, of this function stateful set launches a runner to invoke the function logic. So we can see uh, here uh, the pod has a runner for the function source of sync. So with the native support of Kubernetes, uh, function mesh can support automatically scaling uh, of, of the number of paths uh, based on Kubernetes uh, HPA, which is a, a horizontal uh, part out of scalar. When users submit a CRD with uh, uh, with max uh, replicas, uh, like this example shown, uh, we set the max replicas to eight, and then uh, the HPA controller will monitoring the related part to determine uh, if it needs to change the number of hard replica, replicas. So currently we support monitoring based on the CPU usage. And uh, lastly, uh, we have one more thing, which is the mesh worker service. Uh, mesh worker service implemented with uh, POSA's uh, worker service interface and uh, packed as a NAR package and uh, you can use it as a plugin worker service along with the POSA bro brokers. Uh, it basically forward the POSA admins API request to Kubernetes cluster and directly operate on CRD. Uh, 
uh, which with the mesh work series, users do not need to change the way they manage functions with POSAS function worker, and can use POSA, uh, POSA admin with function mesh directly. Uh, currently, uh, be, uh, because of some um, uh, interface limit limitation and uh, uh, the mesh work series only works with the POSA 2.80 or uh, even have have version, and it can manage function, sync, and source their this. Uh, the limitation of function uh, of mesh work services, uh, we cannot use uh, a post admin to uh, to manage uh, uh, mesh CRDs uh, for now. And we also added some useful configs to allow user to customize the worker service, like uh, we can. Uh, we can disable or uh, uh, enable the, uh, the the specific API endpoint like a function point or sync or source endpoint. Uh, we can even uh, configure if we support user to upload their custom customer function or uh, source sync jar package. And we can also uh, define some uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, resources like volume mount or volumes and uh, some other uh, runtime uh, configuration. Okay, and uh, uh, with the mesh work service, we also allow user to manage uh, built-in connectors uh, by defining a list of the metadata of supported uh, connectors. Uh, it's basically the metadata looks like this uh, this code block, and uh, you can uh, user can just uh, define the uh, supported uh, list, and uh, and and we can use the POSA admin to get the available source or available sync of the building connectors. Uh, so. Uh, uh, here comes to the summary, uh, which I will elaborate the uh, key benefits of Function Mesh. So we built Function Mesh to ease the man management of POSA functions when you run multiple instances of function together. And the Function Mesh utilizes the full power of Kubernetes scheduler, in including development, scaling, and management. It also uh, makes POSA function run natively in the cloud environment, which leads to great uh, possibilities when more resources become available in the cloud. And then lastly, uh, function mesh enables POSA functions to work with different messaging system and uh, to integrate with existing tools in the cloud environment. This is because function mesh run POSA function independently from uh, POSA cluster. And finally, I will talk about some future plans. And uh, firstly, we want to improve the capability level of function mesh operator. And we also want to add more uh, POSA functions feature to function mesh and extend the feature party. party. And uh, such as we want to add the stateful function to function mesh, and we want also we want to support uh, additional uh, runtime based on self-contained function run runtime, uh, such as we want to add uh, a web assembly runtime to function mesh, and also uh, we want to develop uh, better tools or front end. Uh, uh, UI to manage and inspect function mesh uh, with such, uh, such uh, better uh, uh, usage tools. And we also want to uh, group uh, individual functions together to improve uh, latency and reduce cost. And lastly, we, we would like to uh, have uh, support uh, advanced auto scaling. Uh, which we will uh, expose uh, more metrics to each function and uh, have advanced auto scaling supported based on the extended metrics. Uh, so, uh, 
that's end of my share. And if you are interested in function mesh, you can come to our web website, which is functionmesh.io. And for detailed uh, uh, for detailed docs about installation, usage, and development. So uh, we also open source the function mesh on GitHub, which is the stream native uh, slash function mesh. And uh, welcome to star fork or posting issues and pull requests. So if you want to try function mesh on your local machine, uh, you can uh, start with our one key installation script. Uh, it will start a kind, uh, which is uh, uh, Kubernetes in Docker cluster on your local environment and install function mesh to the kind cluster. Also, we have provided a Helm charts to install uh, function mesh to any existing Kubernetes uh, cluster. Uh, currently, it's not published to the uh, chart repo, so you, you may have to clone the, uh, the function mesh first and install it with the Helm. So uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us on GitHub. And uh, next, back to Nan, and uh, he will give us a short demo with function mesh. And thanks. Uh, uh, hi, guys. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the talk. So um, <clears throat> let's uh, quickly jump into the uh, demo. So. Oh, so for the demo, uh, we actually implement a uh, uh, productionize that in our like cloud offerings. So I just uh, we can just uh, take a look and go ahead. So the uh, we enable the connectors inside the streamative cloud offering. So I'm kind of going to um, create some kind of the uh, source and syncs and uh, and so that like and also send some messages through the. Uh, uh, AWS SQS service, and we will see that the another like SQS queue will be able to receiving um, <clears throat> this send message. Yeah. Yeah, so now that uh, we have like uh, set up the both the source and sync, we can do some kind of a very simple testing. This is kind of we're sending the <coughs> hello pass uh, hello pass submit uh, message <coughs> to the to the to this SKS um, queue, and we will be like pulling the message from another SKS queue. Basically, like um, it will be the message will go into the uh, SKS um, SKS queue and then like pulled by the source. Uh, SQS source and then like uh, send into the Pulsar uh, cluster, which actually runs inside a GCP envi uh, GCP environment, and we'll be sending that back to the AWS SKS queue. Yeah, and also if you notice, like this AWS is actually set up in China, so basically the message is traveling through the whole Pacific Ocean. Um, yeah, I think uh, later on uh, I will just like delete those kind of. Uh, uh, Sync source and syncs. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I think I will just start it, stop here, and uh, for, for, and uh, I think I will skip this. Uh, skip this uh, second demo, which is more like that to have a sense of the what's happening under the hood. So if you are interested, like we can, the stats should be available for download, and you can check that later again. So at least, uh, last but not least, like we are hiring. So if you feel the talk the Pulsar project and the things we are doing are interesting, please feel free to shoot us uh, uh, some kind of uh, emails to let us know that uh, you, uh, we will, you, you would like to work with us. And yeah, I think that's it. Thank you.